Hi, this is Vanessa. Welcome back to another episode of Azeng News. Indonesia seizes Iranian flag tanker suspected of illegal oil transshipment. Indonesia's Coast Guard said it has seized an Iranian flagged supertanker suspected of involvement in the illegal transshipment of crude oil. Indonesia's Maritime Security Agency, Bakamla, said the very large crude carrier VLCC MT Arman 114 was carrying 272,569 metric tons of light crude oil valued at 4.6 trillion rupiah or $304 million and was suspected of transferring the oil to another vessel, the Cameroon flagged MT Estinos, without a permit. We're still investigating the case, but clearly they are selling oil on our seas. Our sea has become a location for illegal activities, which we have in the past called. This is what we have so far in terms of information, but the situation could develop at any point soon once we have interrogated the Iranian ship's captain. Apparently, they had contacted the company owners to sell their oil and conduct the transaction in Indonesia's zone at a location with specific coordinates. Wilayah Indonesia, ketemulah di koordinat yang tadi itu. According to Bakamla, both were trying to escape, so authorities decided to focus their pursuit on MT Arman, assisted by Malaysian authorities as the vessel sailed into Malaysian waters. In 2021, Indonesia seized Iranian and Panamanian flagged vessels due to similar allegations. The captains of the two vessels were later put on two-year probation by an Indonesian court. Blinken said Myanmar military regime must stop violence in the country. The United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Myanmar's military regime must be pushed to stop violence and implement a peace plan it agreed with its Southeast Asian neighbors two years ago. The remarks came amid the ASEAN post-ministerial conference in Jakarta, during which Blinken had also taken part in a bilateral meeting with his Indonesian counterpart Reto Marsudi as well as China's top diplomat Wong Yi. In Myanmar, we must press the military regime to stop the violence, to implement ASEAN's five-point consensus, to support a return to democratic governance. Just yesterday, the United States announced over $74 million in additional humanitarian relief to the region, including nearly $61 million to support Rohingya displaced by the ongoing violence in Myanmar. We believe that the U.S. will continue to support ASEAN centrality and reinforce ASEAN position as epicentrum of growth. The gathering of ASEAN nations comes as passion wears thin among its 10 members over Myanmar's military rulers' refusal to hold hostilities and start inclusive dialogue as agreed to by its top general in April 2021. ASEAN has barred the junta from its summits for failing to implement the five-point consensus, the only diplomatic process in play for achieving peace in Myanmar, where the United Nations estimates 1.5 million people has been displaced. Russia says strengthening its architecture in ASEAN will promote peace and stability. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that his country consistently stands for the strengthening of its architecture in Asia-Pacific as it is the foundation of security and stability in the region. Lavrov made the comments during a meeting with the ASEAN counterparts in Jakarta, where the regional bloc is holding annual meetings. We consistently stand for the strengthening of our own architecture, which should remain the foundation of the security and sustainable development of the Asia-Pacific region. We know that not everyone likes it, but we are guided not by someone's preferences, but by objective tasks, peace and stability in this vast space. Russia has sought to foster much closer economic, political and security ties with Asia since the West hit Moscow with unprecedented sanctions in response to the invasion of Ukraine. ASEAN to enhance partnership with India to tackle global challenges. ASEAN and India urged strengthened strategic ties to tackle global challenges amid the bloc's annual ministerial conference in Jakarta. India's Foreign Minister Subramanian Jai Shankar confirmed the recognition of ASEAN centrality during the post-ministerial meeting conference and stressed its importance to the nation's vision in the region. That our defence ministers met for the inaugural 
ASEAN India Defence Ministers informal meeting on the sidelines of the ADMM Plus in Siem Reap in November 2022. Our navies have held an ASEAN India maritime exercise in May this year. And we're currently working with India to establish an annual Track 1 ASEAN India Cyber Dialogue and an ASEAN India Track 1 seminar on maritime cooperation as well. I want to thank our, my ASEAN colleagues and Indian colleagues as well, and especially our permanent representatives in Jakarta for seeing through all these initiatives. We can do more to enhance substantive links between our two regions and to build resilience to tackle the ongoing and future global challenges. We can do more to enhance the annual meetings, which also includes major powers such as China and Russia, come as doubts to mount over the credibility and unity of the bloc in dealing with the region's thorniest challenges. ASEAN also hold the East Asia Summit and the ASEAN Regional Forum with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who is slated to attend. European Union does not recognize military junta as Myanmar to become ASEAN coordinator. European Union Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell said the European Union does not recognize the military junta in Myanmar as he expressed concern over the nation becoming the coordinator for relations with the Union. Borrell's comments come during the ASEAN post-ministerial conference with the European Union where Philippine Foreign Minister and Conference Chair Enrique Manalo emphasized confidence in strengthened ties between the two blocs. Let me raise one issue of concern. You know that we face a challenge related to the potential of Myanmar assuming the role of ASEAN coordinator for relations with the European Union. We don't recognize the military junta and trust you will find a solution to overcome this issue. All that being said with the best will of cooperation among us. We are optimistic that the plan of action to implement the ASEAN-EU strategic partnership will advance in the coming years. We welcome the EU strategy for cooperation in the Indo-Pacific and EU support and recognition of ASEAN centrality underpinning its strategy in the Indo-Pacific. ASEAN has barred the junta from its summits for failing to implement the five-point consensus, the only diplomatic process in play for achieving peace in Myanmar, where the United Nations estimates 1.5 million people have been displaced. Indonesia holds trilateral meetings with China, Russia, among others. Indonesia, China and Russia held a trilateral meeting on the sideline of the ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting in Jakarta. A statement released by Indonesia's foreign ministry regarding the meeting said the nations were upholding international laws and all values and principles of the UN Charter. Indonesia Foreign Minister Reto Marsudi also held separate meetings with China's top diplomat Wang Yi and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and their delegations. The meetings come ahead of East Asia Summit and the ASEAN Regional Forum with top diplomats of the United States, Russia and China among those attending. Saudi Arabia signs treaty became ASEAN family. Instrument of accession to the treaty Saudi Arabia became the 51st country to sign ASEAN's Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, a document that commits signatories to values including cooperation, international law, peace and stability. The signing ceremony was held on the sidelines of the annual gathering of the ASEAN Foreign Ministers in Jakarta. ASEAN Chair, Indonesia's Foreign Minister Reto Marsudi wel welcomed the Kingdom, represented by Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan, on behalf of the 10-member bloc following the signing. We welcome Saudi Arabia to ASEAN family and together we must serve as a positive force for peace, stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. This reflects Saudi's strong commitment to abide by ASEAN values and principles as enshrined in the TEC. A commitment to cooperate and collaborate a commitment to consistently uphold international law, a commitment to contribute to peace, stability in the Southeast Asia and beyond. 
the signing ceremony and other ASEAN Foreign Minister meetings in the ASEAN Regional Forum with top diplomats of the United States, Russia and China among those attendings. Australia seeks to deepen engagement with ASEAN for regional stability. ASEAN and Australia pledge to strengthen peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region during the bloc's annual ministerial conference. Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong said her country will be contributing $775 million to Southeast Asia and Timor-Leste this year to promote the region's development. Deepening Australia's engagement with Southeast Asia is a priority for our government because ASEAN's security is Australia's security and ASEAN's success is our success. We will continue to strongly support ASEAN's vital role in the peace and stability of our region. ASEAN's contribution through preventative diplomacy is essential to our shared goals. We all want a region that safeguards our capacity to disagree, preserves state's agency, and protects our ability to decide our own destiny free from pressure. Well, last firm we still upload the Australian commitment to continue to support ASEAN. We thank Australia for its continued support for ASEAN centrality in evolving regional architecture, including support for the implementation of ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. Economic cooperation between ASEAN and Australia has flourished over the years, with both sides reaping the benefits of our shared prosperity. The annual meetings held in Jakarta this year also include major powers such as China and Russia and comes as dubs to mount over the credibility and unity of the bloc in dealing with the region's thorniest challenges. Indonesian and Australian leaders meet in Sydney to discuss green economy and security areas. Indonesian President Joko Widodo said strategic cooperation with Australia on electric vehicle batteries was a priority after talks with his Australian counterpart in Sydney. I thank you for your commitments. There are some future priorities that we need to do together. Among others, first, Indonesia and Australia must build a more substantive and strategic economic cooperation through the joint production of electronic vehicle batteries. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese added, Indonesia's Chamber of Commerce and Industry signed an action plan with the state of Western Australia on critical mineral supply chain and workers' skills. The meeting between the leaders was held at the harbour site Taronga Zoo. And today our relationship shifts up another gear. Our countries continue to choose to draw closer together as economic partners, as security partners, and as partners in the global transition to net zero. Widodo and Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese spoke to reporters after an annual leaders' meeting where green economy and regional security were discussed. Widodo, who is in his second and final term in office, wants to build an electric vehicle battery production industry in Indonesia, which has the world's largest nickel reserves. Fukushima residents want normal life after years of displacement. After years of displacement, since the Fukushima nuclear disaster in 2011, residents who have come back to Fukushima simply hope to live an ordinary life. We are just ordinary people with a strong sense of powerlessness. I hope the government could release information about the quality of the nuke contaminated water. Although they have done something like that, it is full of terminologies and we can barely understand them. The local agriculture fishery and tourism hit the rock bottom after the disaster. In addition, the nuclear polluted water is about to be discharged into the ocean, which will make the rejuvenation even more difficult. In 2011, the course of the three reactors of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan melted down following a major earthquake and tsunami. The Japanese government decided in April 2021 to filter and dilute the nuclear contaminated water from the Fukushima plant and discharge it into the sea from 2023. Well, thank you very much. Have a nice week this ahead. We hope to see you again soon and bye.